الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوا وسلموا على عبده ورسوله وخليله وصفوته من خلقه وامينه على وحيه محمد بن عبد الله الذي ارسله الله جل وعلا رحمه للعالمين وحجه على الخلق اجمعين احييكم ايها الاخوه والاخوات واحيي شيخنا الشيخ عبد الله شاكر رئيس جماعه انصار السنه لجمهوريه مصر العربيه ودعوتهم دعوه سلفيه ولهم نشاط عظيم داخل مصر وخارجه وهو شريكي في هذه الندوه اتكلم انا مره ويتكلم مره اخرى Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Shaykh started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending his salutations upon the Prophet He also greeted everybody and he went on to introduce his fellow speaker uh, who is Shaykh Abdullah Shakir who is the head of uh, Jamit Ansar Sunnah in uh, Cairo and he also said that this is an organization that does great work in Egypt in propagating the Salafi Da'wah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa khatam al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabi Sheikh started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending his salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu my, my dear brothers, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now this is a great opportunity to meet with you in a house from the houses of Allah ومعنا في الحقيقة شيخنا وأستاذنا. and with us in reality is our sheikh and our teacher. فضيلة الشيخ الدكتور. the the great sheikh and doctor. صالح الغالي السدلان. الشيخ صالح السدلان. وأنا عندما أجلس إلى جواره. and whenever I sit next to him. وأتحدث إلى جنبه. and and I speak next to him. في مثل هذا اللقاء. in a gathering like this. فأنا في الحقيقة متطفل في ذلك. And I, I feel a privilege to do this. ولذلك يعني أقدمه ليبدأ الحديث. And for this, for this reason I will ask him to speak first. الموضوع الذي سيكون موضع حديثنا الآن وسنركز على الكلام في حدود 20 أو 30 دقيقة. وبعد ذلك نتلقى الأسئلة منكم ولو مدة نصف ساعة أو أكثر بحسب ما يردنا من الأسئلة الموضوع هو المخرج من الفتن المخرج من الفتن uh, Sheikh said that he will speak about those things which take us out of the situation of fitna or trials and tribulations. And he said he will speak for approximately 20 to 30 minutes, which will be followed by half an hour of questions and answers, uh, depending on how many questions are received. <laughs> uh, I will summarize the topic in two points, and then I will pass over to Sheikh Abdullah. النقطة الأولى المخرج من الفتن هو كتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. الثاني. The first point I want to mention of the two points is that the way to escape from the fitna is to follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. الثاني الآلية للخروج من الفتن يعني ما هي الآلية ما هي الوسيلة. حتى أستطيع أن أتقي هذه الفتن ولا أدخل فيها. And second point is that what is the tool and what is the way in which I may escape from these fitan. أقول بأن الخروج من الفتن هو قراءة والتعلم والاطلاع على ما جاء في كتاب الله من وقاية الفتن وعلى ما جاء. في سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في اتقاء الفتن نقرأ قبل ليس إذا حلت الفتن نقرأ الآن توعية ثقافة حتى نكون على استعداد 
Sheikh says that uh, the way of escaping from the fitan is to read and to learn and to reflect upon the texts of the Quran and Sunnah which deal with protection from the fitna and not to wait until the fitna actually descends upon us. Rather we start reading and learning these texts from now. <laughs> I wanted to mention now a very important matter in how to deal and our, what our position should be with regards to fitan. And this, in summary, and whenever the fitna it happened, that the people they should return to those pious godly scholars. That our, 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 our scholar here, our Sheikh here, he has referred to the Quran and the Sunnah. And there are issues and situations which happen from time to time. And all praises to Allah, the scholars, they are present and they are many. And I mean by the people of knowledge. The people who follow the, the correct methodology. That those who follow the path of the pious predecessors. The people of the Sunnah and, and Jama'ah. And they have from knowledge and understanding and fiqh. That, that which protects the matters whenever the fitna it happens. And Allah has, has shown this in his statement that whenever a matter of fear uh, or fear of or security came to them, they spread it. And then Allah he said after this of ayah, that if they had returned this matter to the Prophet and, and those in command amongst them, then they would have told them what to have done. That whenever the fitna it happened, then we return the matter to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Chosen One, the Prophet ﷺ. And thereafter, the pious godly scholars from Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Uh, uh, he, he said, I just wanted to say that what our Sheikh here, Sheikh Abdullah, he said, is very important and very great. Uh, he said that, that there are several matters. The first matter is not to get into the fitna in the first place. That when the people they speak about so many matters, then we don't make things worse and we don't get it into get into it in the first place. Now, uh, the Sheikh, he said the second point is, that, as Sheikh Abdullah has said, that we should refer back to several reference points. The first reference point is the Quran and Sunnah, and the second reference point are the scholars, the, the pious, godly scholars who follow the correct manhaj and who are known for the correct aqidah and for the correct ibadah and for the correct action. <laughs> uh, that I, wa I want to mention a hadith <laughs> that I want to support what our Shaykh he has said that he mentioned in the, uh, the point he mentioned at the beginning of his last piece and that is that when the fitna it happens and that the Muslim he should not delve into it 
and that he should not descend to the level of its people. And the Prophet and that he has directed us to do this in an authentic hadith. And in this hadith it came that the fitan they will happen. That the, the, the one who sits, he is better than the one who stands. And that the one who is standing is better than the one who is walking. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said. فهذا واحد منها طريق من الطرق الواضحة الجيدة البينة. This hadith it explains us how to protect ourselves from fitna and it is something which shows us this matter very very clearly. القائم القاعد فيها خير من القائم والقائم فيها خير من الماشي ومعناه أنه لا يدخل في الفتنة. Uh, he mentioned again the hadith that in the times of fitna that the one who is sitting he is better than the one who is standing and the one who is standing is better than the one who is walking so he said in summary that this shows us that we should not even get involved in these fitnas <laughs> and I say that from the important matters <laughs> that benefit from falling into fitna to stick to the guidance of the Prophet and we benefit from this and we benefit from this and we can benefit from this from the ayat in the Quran about the situation of the hypocrites those that they would they would flee from from uh, submitting themselves to the Prophet ﷺ. and that they were in important situations uh, and that they would they would يحضرونه. No, they, 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 they used the uh, hypocrites they, they would go to him and they would seek his permission and whenever they would go to him, they would request for him uh, situations so they would not fall into the fitna. So Allah has informed us about them and that they by distancing themselves from the Prophet and by not by submitting to him and that they fell into fitna because of these matters. And Allah has said, and from them are those who say, uh, leave me and do not corrupt me. And Allah has said in, in relation to what they said, that they indeed that these people they have fallen into the fitna and we understand from this and that the reason why they fell into the fitna is because that they left the guidance of the Prophet which he was sent with which the Prophet was sent with دكتور عبد الله عامل مهم بطريقة واضحة أن يبتعد الإنسان عن الفتن بعدم الدخول فيها وأن لا يدعي أنه يجتنب الفتن وهو واقع فيها uh, he said that what Sheikh Abdullah has mentioned is showing us the, the, the path and that it is important and it is clear. And the main thing is not to get into, into the fitna in the first place and not to claim that you are getting yourself out of the fitna when in fact you are falling into it. <laughs> والناس يرغبون الإجابة على أسئلتهم، فا 
فإلى ذلك وإلى عرض الأسئلة المكتوبة والذي يريد أن يسأل شفويا أيضا يسأل Sheikh said that uh, now we will come to the questions and answers because from our experience we found that it's best to do this and that three quarters of the time should be for questions and answers and whoever wants to ask directly from the floor can do so and whoever wishes to write on paper then they can ask the questions as well. <coughs> <laughs> and one of the brothers he asks that what, what is the ruling of saying Alhamdulillah without mentioning the Al at the beginning of Alhamdulillah. <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وليس حمد لله منكر بل هو معرفة الحمد لله لاستغراق جميع المحامد كلها لله وحده the Sheikh is saying that this is not allowed to delete the, the Al from Alhamdulillah. Allah has made it in the Quran. He has made it definite and not indefinite. And uh, in, our, in Arabic language, when you use it as definite, then it encompasses all types of praise. So it is, in short, it's not allowed to do this. No. Uh, next question is for Sheikh Abdullah. No, no, if you find yourself in a situation within families, for example, one person is wanting you to follow a certain opinion. No. And other parties are saying to follow, uh, for you to follow another opinion. What should you do? Because you don't want to get in a situation where you're going upsetting no. both parties. No. So how should you deal with uh, no. such a situation? Ah, السائل يسأل لو كان في عائلة واحدة شخصان وواحد منهما هو يدعو إلى منهج معين والثاني يدعو إلى منهج مختلف وتجد نفسك يعني بين 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 نارين يعني كيف تحل المشكلة وما ومن تتبع؟ طبعا سأجيب وأترك أيضا تعليقا لشيخنا إن شاء الله. I said I will answer the question then I will leave our sheikh to add additional points. يا إخواني نحن ليس لنا خيار uh, my brothers, that in the religion that we don't have the choice to do whatever we want. Rather, we are obligated to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. That Allah has said, that all you who believe that do not put yourselves ahead of Allah and His Messenger. And Allah has said that it is not befitting for a believing man and a believing woman that when Allah and His Messenger they have decided a matter for that person to have a choice in the matter. That the, the issue in, in issues of belief is that they are one and they, they cannot be split. And the, and the way of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'a is one and it is not multiple. And that the path of Allah is one path. And because of this, and because of this, that one of the two people he is, is wrong and the other one is correct. And that whoever is, is wrong, then he should return to the truth. And that if the truth became apparent with, with evidence, then it is an obligation to follow. Otherwise, the person, he was from those who followed their desires. Uh, Sheikh, if you can add some additional points, because it's an important point. I say in addition to what Dr. Abdullah has said, it was a good answer and beneficial answer. بين شخصين لا يدري لا يخلو من أمور ثلاثة ما أنه يجهلهما جميعا أو يعرفهما جميعا أو يعرف واحدا منهم الآخر لا يعرف Sheikh says that uh, in this situation where somebody is caught between two people, then there are three situations. The first situation is that he doesn't know either of them. The second situation is that he knows both of them well. And the third situation is that he only knows one of the two. 
بعلمه وفضله وتمسكه بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله فليتبعه وليترك الآخر المجهول وإن كان لا يعرفه فإنه يتركه ويترك الآخر حتى يتكلم الناس ويتضح من هو الذي يؤخذ قوله أو يترك he said that if he knows that one of them is well known for having knowledge and piety, then he sh and he doesn't know the other one, then he should follow the one with knowledge and piety. And if he doesn't know either of them, then he should leave both of them and listen to what the people have to say about both of them. Uh, another question. As we're talking about fitna, what do you do when you are surrounded by fitna all around you and really you have the means to get out of it, but you uh, attempt to shut your eyes and hope that it will go away. No. Uh, in a harsh Muslim yeah. way. Uh, 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 yes, uh, 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 ما ما هو العقاب لمن يتجاهل يعني الفتن حوله ولا يحاول أن يخرج نفسه من الفتن؟ أولا إذا كان الإنسان في هذا الظرف الذي ذكر فإما أن يدخل في نفسه ويحاول وهذا واقع كثير من الناس وإما أنه يعرض إعراضا كاملا وهذا حسب نيته هل لأنه لا يملك القدرة والرد أو لأنه مستهتر بالأمر غير مبال فهذا يعثم هذا يعثم أما الإنسان الذي يسكت لأنه لا يريد أن يدخل في الموضوع فيشعل الفتنة أكثر وأكثر uh, he said uh, that if you stay in a fitna in this kind of situation, then either you will become part of the fitna or your other situation is that you turn away and it, this depends on your intention. But ultimately, uh, you, will, you will sin and the fitna will grow greater and greater. Uh, if the Sheikh Abdullah has uh, anything else to add to this question. My brothers, that the fitna it is dangerous and it, it affects you in, in your heart and in your, in your deeds and that, uh, that a person, a slave, he should try to free himself uh, and, from, and escape from this and that someone who is intelligent is not imaginable that the fitna should happen in front of him and then he does not even try to escape from the fitna and this person he gets himself deeper into it uh, by submitting to Allah and his messenger uh, and doing what a person should do and to protect himself from it I say additionally to what you have heard that the companions when they uh, experienced the fitna in the time of Uthman that some of them they entered their homes and they locked the doors that they entered their homes and they took the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that break your weapons and bre break your weapons and hang on to the roots of a tree even with your teeth. And others they left their homes and they went to the mountains. And from them was Amr ibn al-As. And he said and when he was far away from the and from the, the boycott or the, the surrounding of Uthman he said that I have, I have gone away and I have taken refuge in the places where the wolves are لوجود الفتنة 
وفوت انسان فكبت اطير المره الاخرى يا شيخ وصوت صوت انا لا لا هي ميد ا نويز نعم صوت الانسان وصوت انسان فكبت اطير هي سيد ا هيرد ا بيرسون اند اي اولموست فلو فهذا منهج الصحابه رضي الله عنهم الذي دخل بيته والذي خرج الى الصحراء الى الجبال بعيدا حتى تهدأ الفتنه. This was the methodology of the companions that they would either stay at home and lock the doors or they would go far into the desert to protect themselves from the fitna. السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام شيخ عبد الله عندي سؤال جزاكم الله خير على المحاضره المفيده اولا ثانيا السؤال هو الناس اللي بيحتف بيحتفلون بعيد الميلاد او او بالميلاد العام حق الناس اولا هذا لا يجوز بس في ناس بيقولون ان تجمع للعائله و the brother is asking about birthdays. He said that uh, birthdays are not permissible, but sometimes the families they come together to have a simple celebration. Is this allowed? Uh, to be honest, that the religion is that which Allah has legislated. And the Sunnah is what the Prophet he came with. والإسلام قد جمع بين الدين والتعبد. That Islam has has combined between the religion and worship. ونظم حياة الناس ومعاملاتهم. And has organized life of people and their their transactions and dealings. والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. هو الذي كان يعلم الناس الكتاب والحكمة. And he is the one that used to teach people the 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 book, the Quran, and the Sunnah. وما ترك خيرا إلا دل الأمة عليه. And he did not leave anything good except that he told the Ummah what it was. ولا شر إلا حذرها منه. And no evil except that he warned the people from it. وبناء على هذا أقول. And building upon this, I say. هل فعل ذلك النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام? Did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم do this? هل احتفل مثلا بعيد ميلاده؟ That did he celebrate his his own birthday؟ أو بعيد ميلاد أحد ممن سبقه من الأنبياء والمرسلين؟ Or from the birthdays of anyone who preceded him from the prophets and the messengers؟ أو بزوجاته؟ Or his wives؟ وقد توفيت أم الأم المؤمنين خديجة. And خديجة رضي الله عنها she 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 had passed away. ولم يفعل شيئا من ذلك. And he did not celebrate this in any way. أما القول بأننا نحتفل لنجتمع. And as for the statement that let's celebrate and gather, and I just said that Islam it has organized the relationships between people, and this is something which is obligatory. And this is not connected to any specific one day, or with a celebration that this has no basis in the Sharia. فهذا من البدع والمحدثات. And this is from the bid'ah and from the innovations. التي يجب على الإنسان أن يبتعد عنها. Which a human being, a person, he should distance himself from. فنحن عندنا في الإسلام عيدان. And as in Islam we have two eids. الفطر والأضحى. إذا الفطر إلى الأضحى. وما سوى ذلك. And any other celebrations other than these two. فلا يحتفل الإنسان بشيء من. Then a person he should not celebrate any other celebration other than this. والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. كان على ذلك. And he used to do this. وقد أخبر أصحابه عند هجرته إلى المدينة النبوية. And that when he went on his migration to المدينة المنورة. بأن الله أبدل أمته. That 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 Allah he has exchanged for this ummah. بعيدين خيرا من أعياد الجاهلية. With two eids which are better than the eids of ignorance. Which are the eid al adha and eid al fitr. كلام الدكتور عبد الله كلام قوي وكلام مفيد وكلام في الصميم أيضا. He said that the response of Dr. Abdullah it was a strong response and it was a beneficial response. وأضيف إلى هذا الكلام الجميل. And I wanted to add to these beautiful words. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. عاش بين أصحابه ثلاثا وعشرين عاما. That he lived amongst his companions for twenty three years. عمره في الرسالة ثلاثة وعشرين عام. And that his his a ثلاثة وعشرين عام. لا يعني the 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 message of Islam it was twenty three years. ولم يقل يوما من الأيام. And he never said. أقيموا عيدا لميلادي. That I will I will celebrate my birth. 
وأتى من بعده أبو بكر أبو بكر رضي الله عنه. أبو بكر he came رضي الله عنه after him. ولم يقم عيد ميلاد في في خلافة. And that he never established during his khilafat an Eid Milad of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa Umar. And Umar. Khilafatu ithna ashar aaman. That his khilafat was twelve years. ولم يقم عيد ميلاد للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he too did not celebrate the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa Uthman. And Uthman. ثلاثة عشر عاما وخليفة. and he was خليفه for twelve years. ولم يقم عيد ميلاد للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. and he did not establish the birthday of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وكذلك خلافة علي رضي الله عنها. and likewise. عنه وهي ستة أشهر ولم يقم عيد عيد لميلاد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. and similarly in the time of Ali who was خليفه for six. And he never did it. والحسن بن علي رضي الله عنه. And Hassan ibn Ali رضي الله عنه. ولا الخلافة بعد أبيه. And he took the خلافة. ولا يقم شيء من ذلك. He took the خلافة after his father, and he did not do any of these celebrations. ومعاوية خلافته طويلة تقارب أربعين عاما ولم يقم يوما من الأيام عيدا للميلاد. And Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu, he too, he never celebrated the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his rule, rule was very long for about 40 years. The, Eid, the celebration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's birthday, it happened 600 years after him. That is it possible that something which happened 600 years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam can possibly be taken as religion and as part of the Sharia? And then we say to these people, those who celebrate the Eid al-Milad, that no one was known with more excellence, and following the Sunnah. ولا محافظة على الفرائض الصلوات الخمس and protecting the five prayers nobody was known more ولا تتبعا للسنة or following the sunnah وإنما أئمتهم في هؤلاء المبتدعة and the imams who do this they are from the innovators فهل يكون إمامك بدل رسول الله رجل مبتدع يدعو إلى الفتن so will you take as your imam somebody who is an innovator, somebody who is calling to fitna instead of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Are there any other questions? He is asking for the tafsir of uh, an ayah that uh, led the one. Can you read the whole ayah? Oh, yeah. no, an ayah in Surah An-Nur. And in it there is a warning from Allah. Uh, for a warning against disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the ayah it explains. And that by disobeying him. That it it leads to fitna. And it is it is present in the tafsir. And this ayah is present in the tafsir. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, the, the Imam of the Salafi Dawah in his time, he has said. And in his book at Tawheed. He mentioned the statement in which he mentioned and that do you know what fitna is? That if, if a statement of the Prophet is, is rejected then it leads to that because of this something will fall in his, his, his heart 
from corruption and, and he will be lost, destroyed. And this statement it explains <laughs> the danger of disobeying the Prophet and by falling in, in fitna and the fitna itself is disobeying the Prophet okay. and this ayah and that, أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب عظيم دليل على أن المسلم ينبغي يكون على حذر دائما وأبدا دائما وأبدا وألا يقع في المخالفات الشرعية فإنه معرض نفسه لهذه العقوبة الأليمة العظيمة he said uh, when a believer he reads this ayah, he should be very, very cautious. He should be very, very cautious such that he does not disobey the Prophet ﷺ and fall into a situation which will lead him to be punished with a painful punishment. Uh, so I'll... I've heard some people when they do a refutation, they make sometimes they might say a statement such as so and so's fitna is worse than the fitna of the job. Is it correct to say this type of statement in refuting someone? يقول السائل حينما بعض الناس يردون على الآخرين يستعملون التعبير فتنة هذا الرجل فتنة هذا الرجل أسوأ من فتنة الدجال هل هل يصح استعمال هذا التعبير في الردود؟ ما يعني يمكن حسب تقدير الراد عليه الذي يقول أشد من فتنة الدجال حسب تقديره هو لكن قد يكون صح أنه أشد وقد يكون الأمر أقل من ذلك فيعود إلى تقديره وفهمه هو he said this matter it returns to the person who is making the refutation that he has to make an estimation and he said it could be that the person could use such a term and whether he should use it or not it depends on the judgment of the person who is making the refutation أعود فأقول إلى جانب كلام الشيخ عبد الله الجميل إن هذه الآية فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن أمره أن تصيبهم فتنة he said, I wanted to add about this ayah in Surah An-Nur, in addition to what Shaykh Abdullah mentioned. That this is a great ayah. That we should never make this absent from our minds. And this person, he should be very, very cautious from fitna. من الله عليه باتباع كتاب الله وسنة رسوله. نعم. لا يعجز أحدا. نعم. No one is. نعم. No one is unable to follow the 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 سنة of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. ولكن. However. المهم المهم. The most important thing. أن يكون الراد قادرا على التعبير عن ما في نفسه وأن يكون المردود عليه. عنده استعداد وإصغاء لما يقال له أما بعض المفتونين فإنه لا يستطيع يتسمع ولا يستمع حتى قال أحدهم لو افتقرت إلى الشريط الذي تحدث به فلان ما وجدت إجابة على سؤالي ما قرأت هذا الشريط سأعاديه أبدا ما 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 عشت هذا من التكبر وقد ألف شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب كتابا سماه مسائل الجاهلية هذا الكتاب جمع فيه شيخ ما كان أهل الجاهلية يعترضون به على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقدره وقدر هذه الاعتراضات 808 مسائل نعم نعم ترجم انا uh, Sheikh is now linking this ayah to the, the question. He said the first thing is that the one who is making the refutation should be capable of expressing his feelings within himself, that he's accurately saying what he wants to say. And secondly, in summary, the Sheikh spoke at length, uh, he, he said that the person 
who listens to his refutation, then he should respond to the refutation and he should not be proud. And then the Sheikh, he mentioned a book by Sheikh, Sheikh Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah, Masailul Jahiliya, where the Sheikh, he mentions uh, 808 uh, reasons as to why the people, they rejected the call. Uh, any, any other questions? Okay. So if the fitna arises, they're always, always trying to run away from it, like no. being advised. No. How are we going to make that change? Uh, um, in, in conciseness, uh, the Sheikh, uh, the Sheikh, he already mentioned something related to this. Uh, he started by mentioning that the first step is to return to the Quran and the Sunnah. And to the pious godly scholars. And to stick to the Sunnah of the Prophet and not to leave it. That no doubt a person he should seek solutions to get us out of the fitna. And, and that this, what we just said, it was uh, around this matter. And uh, in summary, it is what has been mentioned that following the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of the Prophet and to ask the scholars, uh, the considered scholars who followed the way of the Salaf al-Salih, the past predecessors. Allah knows best. I wanted to I wanted to add uh, additional. إلى جانب كلام الدكتور طيب جدا يقول كيف أفر من الفتنة وأعالجها. That he said I wanted to answer the question uh, addition to what the Sheikh Abdullah he mentioned that how can I flee from the fitna at the same time I can cure it. الفتنة لا تدخل فيها لإشعالها. لإشعال توريح النار فيها. لا تدخل في الفتنة على وجه إشعالها وزيادتها بل فر من ذلك. He said, don't enter the fitna and make it even worse. Rather, escape from it. أما الدخول في الفتن للمعالجة. As for the one who enters the fitna with intention to cure the fitna. واختيار الرؤوس الذين أشعلوا الفتنة والانفراد بهم مطلب. Uh, rather this is a, a good choice to sit with those who are spreading the fitna if, if you are able to do this then and calm down the flames of the fitna then this is best thing to do and to cure the fitna and the curing of the fitna should be after referring to the scholars. And that how can we cure this fitna? And, and what, what should happen? And this, should this be through immediately by refuting? Or should this be by congregational refutation? Or should this be by individual refutation? And until we come with a response which is well grounded, uh, such that we are able to escape from this fitna. And that we don't care about those who rush and don't think. And those who they are, are very quick and naive. And that those who don't care about the truth. They leave these people. And rather, uh, you should consider yourself, or you should uh, take into consideration the correct treatment of the fitna. Uh, Sheikh just said, if Sheikh Abdullah thinks we should finish, then we will finish, and then he made dua for everybody here. We ask Allah that He accepts our good actions from all of us. And to give us the tawfiq to do that which He loves and is pleased with. And our advice to you 
and to, to, to grip hold of this religion and the aqeedah and the actions and uh, the behavior and in this is happiness and protection and the best good life in this dunya and the hereafter and Allah has said that whoever does a good action whether he male or female and he is a believer and that we will give him a good life and we will give him the reward of the best of what he did دكتور الكريم الكلام النافع المفيد أننا علينا أن نعتز بهذا الدين وأن نتشرف بهذا الدين وأن نرفع رؤوسنا بديننا قال رجل عندي أناس قبل صلاة العشاء وأذن العشاء واستحييت أن أقول لهم قوموا نصلي في المسجد واستمررنا حتى خرج وقت العشاء فما خطأي قلت خطأك عدم اعتزازك بدينك اعتز بدينك وتشرف بدينك وارفع راسك بدينك صلى الله على نبينا محمد Shaykh, he said that we should be proud and we should feel honor and respect that we are Muslims. And he mentioned a story that one person, he heard the Adhan. However, he felt embarrassed to go out and to ask other people to go out with him to the masjid. So he asked the Shaykh that what I did, is it wrong? And the Shaykh said, yes, you should not feel shy. Rather, you should feel proud and you should have honor that of this religion. Uh, and then the Shaykh, he, he finished. <laughs>